1.7 seconds to 50 km per hour. A torque of 336 newton meters, the Velo FW06 data sounds absolutely crazy, but I found out for you today in Switzerland whether it can also be driven this crazy, so stay tuned. With that, I would like to welcome you to 1000 PS TV, where I'm actually greeting you from the dry because you can always choose the right weather. But it doesn't really bother me because Switzerland has a beautiful landscape. But we are now in the showroom of Etrix, general importer for the entire German region of Velo. And here we were able to put all three colors on the podium. And I think it's quite a looker, especially when you have such a cool scooter in front of you. So the Velo FW06, and I'll come straight to the look, is an absolutely extroverted scooter. The front is very aggressively cut with LED lighting and of course LED indicators. A very short and pointed rear end. That reminds me a bit of the Yamaha R1, to be honest. And this really, really cool single-sided swing arm. We even have a rim cover on here, which you can remove if you want. You can't see it from the top of our test vehicle, but that's purely a matter of taste. As I said, the look is very radical, but I think it goes well with an electric scooter like this. However, the look has another small downside. The pillion seat, let's put it this way, is a little bit of a drawback, but it will do for short distances as it is more of a city scooter. But let's talk about the technical data and how this scooter rides. We have an electric motor with a rated power of 5 kilowatts and a maximum power of 11 kilowatts. This puts it in the A1 class, which means you can ride it from the age of 16. And I have to admit, when I read this data, 1.7 seconds to 50 kilometers per hour and 336 Newton meters, I thought to myself, phew, you're handing something like that to a 16 year old. Isn't that a bit too wild? Isn't that too radical? No? Well, I've been riding today here in the rain, so the toughest conditions you can imagine, but it all works very well for the very simple reason that this electric motor is very, very accessible. The response via the throttle grip is very smooth. You can doze it nicely. And above all, we have traction control on board as standard. This means that not much can happen to me, even if I drive over a crosswalk because the traction control regulates this. And in addition to safety, we also have ABS on board. It works on the front wheels. We don't have ABS on the rear wheel. Apart from that, how is the whole system set up? Well, we have the battery installed here at the front which has a constant capacity of 5.6 kilowatt hours. It's very powerful, but unfortunately it can't be removed, which means you always have to plug the vehicle in directly. So if you want to charge it in the apartment, unfortunately that's not possible unless you have a large elevator and you can transport the whole bike upstairs. But that's just something you have to bear in mind. If you only have a parking space on the street, you have to plug the vehicle in directly. Then we've installed the electric motor here with the power I've just mentioned. And this is then transmitted to the continuously variable transmission via a belt at the rear. I think it looks very smart. It looks good, has its functional value too. And it all works so well and is so pleasantly responsive that it could even be handed to a 16 year old. But it says peak power is 11 kilowatts, 336 Newton meters of torque. How do I release that? quite simply via a small button that I have here on the handlebars, a boost button. If I don't press the boost button, this scooter goes 90 kilometers per hour and accelerates very comfortably, which means it's really, really good for the city. But when I press this boost button, I release the full power, then it accelerates me up to 125 kilometers per hour, and then I can even really ride it on the highway. And the most pleasant thing is that once I'm above 125 kilometers per hour, I no longer have to keep the boost button pressed the bike maintains its speed and I can cruise along at a really relaxed pace. During my ride, however, I noticed that this is not only practical when you want to reach top speed on the highway, but also when going uphill, this boost button is very helpful simply because I then have more power. 
it gives me that electric punch that really pushes me forward and gives me the feeling that I'm on a scooter that's more than just a 125 cubic centimeter scooter that I can ride around town. With all this acceleration, I also noticed the suspension. Because it's designed more for comfort, it's an everyday scooter, and you notice that, especially with rear shocks, it's not adjustable. The scooter always leans a little at the rear when accelerating. Of course, it has the advantage of being very comfortable to ride, but it's not the most sporty thing that this look might suggest. But I'd say it works well enough for everyday use. And in the end, I have to admit, it was fun for me to always press this e-boost button because then the rear sinks in a bit and I feel like, yes, now I have the baddest scooter under me, which accelerates brutally. But the suspension is comfortable, good, but not the sportiest. The same goes for the brakes. They are class compliant, I'd say. So it's nothing that really overwhelms me when I hit the brakes, even in the rain. I'm safe on the road with the ABS at the front and I have to grip the brakes really hard for the rear wheel to block. In other words, it's a package that you can really hand over to anyone. Speaking of putting it in everyone's hands, I'm 175 meters tall, so the seat height is always a problem for me. It's a big issue, especially with scooters, but that's not the case with the Velo F W06 because the seat is relatively narrow. And if I sit on it, you can see that I can get both feet on the ground when standing, have a very secure stance, and that makes maneuvering very easy because this bike only weighs 125 kilograms, which is not that heavy for an electric scooter. And then when I'm riding it, I have to demonstrate the sitting position. I think it's very special. Well, my knee angle is more like that of a naked bike. So the knee angle is very acute and the handlebars are positioned more like a scooter. So it's really something in between. I would almost say it's a scooter for someone who already has a motorcycle in the garage at home, but then wants an e-scooter for the city that is very extroverted and fun to ride because that's how I sit on it. It's very compact. I can maneuver it nicely through the bends and this riding position suggests that. And it also helps me that I'm not sitting on a classic scooter where my feet are there or I really have the worst comfort because you have to say this stylish fairing, this cool look that it has also has its downsides. Unfortunately, I was only riding it in the rain today, so you can tell that it doesn't really offer any wind or weather protection. I'm fully left out in the weather, even though I have this little windshield, but that doesn't help to protect me from the rain. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. You get wet when you're on this scooter. Um, the only thing that perhaps bothers me about the handlebars is the blinker switch. I'm getting very picky about that now. It's another blinker switch, which I have to manually push back to the middle position to deactivate the blinker. Sometimes when I deactivate the blinker, I accidentally turn in the other direction again. It would be easier if I had a central button that I could simply press in to deactivate the blinker. But I say that's something that can be fixed in the next model. We often have that in more affordable vehicles, but I'm not particularly used to it now, I have to say. I also think the display is very high quality and very nice. We have an LC display, which is very easy to read and shows me the most important data, such as my trip meter, my speed, and my range. By the way, the range of this vehicle is around 120 kilometers, and it offers me everything I need on a scooter like this. I've seen worse, I've seen better. It's a nice mid-range, I really like it. Another thing we have that I really, really like about the scooter is keyless go. And that means I only have to put the key control in my pocket, press the button here, and off I go. The last thing I can see here is a glove compartment. It has to be said that this Velo follows this concept of being half motorcycle, half scooter, because there isn't really enough storage space for a scooter. We have a small glove compartment at the front, which fits my cell phone. I can also plug a cell phone in there via the USB port. And here under the seat, I have another small glove compartment. Maybe I can fit my wallet and other small items in there. That's just not typical for a scooter, but I say, it's okay, it suits this bike, it's just not typical for a scooter, even just visually. At the end of the day, however, it always depends on how I load such a scooter and how long I can ride it. I've already mentioned a range of 120 kilometers. The scooter is charged under this cover, I can plug it in, it takes five hours for 80%. And if it really needs to be fully charged, it takes seven to eight hours with the standard charger that comes with the bike. But I say for a city scooter like this, which ultimately ends up back in the garage anyway, that's a charging time that I think is okay because I can plug the scooter in overnight, can set off again the next morning, and with a range of 120 kilometers, I have more than enough range when I'm out and about in the city to get my errands done.
Now to my conclusion, what did I like and what did I not like about the bike? I really like the look, it's just radical, it makes you stand out. I say it again and again, electric scooters simply offer you this possibility through this technology that you only have the electric motor down here in the drive and don't need anything else above it, like a tank or something. This simply offers you the possibility of having only the electric motor and the drive down here and not needing anything else above it, like a tank or something. I think Velo has managed that, so visually I really like it. You have a choice of three colors. To be honest, I would choose the one I'm standing in front of here with the beautiful green and white. I also really like the powertrain, the accessibility of the electric motor, how smoothly it can be controlled, and that I also have this e-boost to get me out of tricky situations or to reach the top speed of 125 kilometers per hour. And I also really like the connectivity because that's also very important these days. You have to be able to connect everything to your smartphone and I can also do that with my bike. There's a special app for this and I can then track the scooter, where it is, what my current charge level is and other information that I can download to my smartphone so that I always have the most important data about my scooter and I think that's very important because electromobility is something new and you need new features like smartphone compatibility. What I didn't like so much to be honest is the blinker switch. As already mentioned it's a bit outdated, a bit old-fashioned, it could be done better um, and what I also didn't like was the pillion seat but that's just a downer for this really cool look that the Velo brings with it. To conclude, who should buy one of these? I've already ridden a few electric scooters, I have a bit of a feel for them and for me this is a classic secondary bike. So if I already have a motorcycle in the garage and I also want an electric scooter because I only ever ride into the city to work, university or wherever, then something like this is cool. Because quite honestly, I like riding with a backpack, the lack of storage space doesn't bother me that much. And then I really have an electric scooter that looks cool, it stands out from the crowd and you like to show off with it. And it also offers me this seating position, almost classic from a motorcycle. In other words, all those people who say I won't get on a scooter because it's not cool, take a look at the Velo. It's cool, has a really sporty riding position and that's fine. Well, those were my impressions of the Velo FW06, the brand new electric scooter. Please let me know in the comments what you think of this little FW06. I'm a real fan. It stands out from the crowd. I absolutely love it. And yes, don't forget to give a thumbs up to Oscar behind the camera who still pulled out his camera in these conditions and got you these shots here. Many thanks, Oscar, and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.